Great. Um, my name's Tyler and we're here at OzCon UK with Rocking Horse Studios, which I'm a part of. And today we're going to be interviewing this lovely fellow. So do you want to introduce yourself? Hello. It's falling on me, jeepers. Oh, wow. Hang on. Health and safety. I'm Mark. Uh, is it going to fall on the floor like just yet? Hello. Let's start it again. Good evening. I'm Mark, and I'm being attacked by this sign. Uh, my name is Mark Silk. It's M A R C S I L K. If you want to follow it on social media, there you go. Little plug. Exactly. This is Twyla. Little plug. And, <laughs> and I'm here at uh, OzCon, and I'm a voice actor for animation and films and games, and lots of voices for lots of cartoons. It's really creepy, Scoob, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of nice, including the fabulous. Grandmaster Glitch from Go Jetters, and we got Captain Rigby from Thunderbirds Are Go, and other people from other shows. They're all quite remarkable. So do you want to kind of run us through your careers so far? Careers? Yes. Well, my first careers... I, in my first careers, I worked as a very successful florist. My second careers, I worked uh, selling uh, mostly pork products in a carpet shop. That failed. Uh, but my most successful and recent careers was as a voice actor in the world of voice acting. And um, no, I'm, I'm, I started in radio um, as a producer and a director. So I was basically the button guy in radio. And then... Um, Bit by bit, I taught myself how to perform character voices because my heroes were always people that did that. There was a great guy called Mel Blanc, and he's sort of the godfather of all this. And he, back in the 1940s, when all of this was just black and white in fields, Mel Blanc was the original voice guy for Warner Brothers cartoon characters. So Mel Blanc was the guy that you heard say, Sovereign Thuggetash, you are despicable. This is the last time I work with someone with a speech impediment. And Mel Blank was the guy that went, What's up, Doc? Mel Blank was the guy that went, Say your prayers, you lop-eared varmint, or I'll blast you to smithereenies. Mel Blank was the guy that went, A Detroit Fred, come on, Betty, let's go. <laughs> Mel Blank was the guy that went, I tried to a putty tag. You bet you throw a putty tag. That putty tag of me. And he was, he was incredible. And those characters and those voices are still around now and as big as ever. So um, people like him and Jim Henson, who created the Muppets, and Robin Williams, who was incredible. All these, all these great heroes. Even a guy called Don Messick. Don Messick was the original uh, voice of Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> and he was the voice of, he was the voice of um, uh, Yogi Bear's friend, uh, Boo Boo. Gee, Yogi, don't tell Ranger Smith about the picnic basket. He had these great voices, and I was lucky enough to meet Don Messick um, when I was just starting out as a fan. I'm still a fan now, but um, but it was so nice to meet him. And then to uh, Don Messick died not long after. And then about five years ago, I got brought in to be um, the to perform the, the voice of Scooby Dooby Doo, and like Shaggy as well, Scoob for projects that are done over here. And it's you know it's dream come true stuff because this stuff you know I, I love these characters and I love this whole world and, and it's such a, a treat being part of it and creating new characters too. I just want to know how you can do all that with a strange face because I cannot stop smiling well, whenever that's you perform. Useful. It's you okay holding out? There's a lot of stuff going. Yeah, I know. It's like, is it gonna wobble? I, is it, let, ladies and gentlemen, let's play. Is it gonna wobble? Mm, yes, it is. Do you even know? Also, you can do even even tricks with microphone technique. So if you're holding it, your nice little zoom here from about this far away, it sounds nice and uh, like a regular conversation. But then for say like a movie trailer, if you want to create them, yeah. So if you bring it closer. Uh, you'll be quieter, but because it's closer, you get what they call this proximity effect, which just means closer, basically. So, but if you did, get ready for action and adventure as these people bring you that movie. Brought to you with Twyla. Now, more than ever, get ready for action and adventure. 2019. And free cake. It's that kind of thing. But there's, um, there's, there's so much there. You have that back, your, 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 nice, your, your nice recording I'm not, device. I'm not sure whether to get it in the shot or not. So I'm just like, yeah, is get it, it in, in shot? In, listen, we're go? talking all about sound here. So that's fine. Here's the Zoom one. Plug, plug. Exactly. But it, it works really well. But the, um, 
Now, in, in terms of when we're creating these things, sometimes we'll laugh a lot in recording sessions. I love the show Go Jetters. It's a terrific show. And it's on CBBS, and I play the the uh, the bad guy. Well, he's not bad. He's just misunderstood. Called Grandmaster Glitch. I'll get you no jetters. <laughs> and uh, every single member of that cast is terrific. And the and it's this big collaboration too. So to be working with these brilliant musicians and the writers and the directors and the the artists and the animators, you know. It, it's. It, I, I love just going around the studios and seeing them work. So to be part of this, it's you know, it's 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 pretty cool. So what would you say is your career highlight then? What was the best moments of your careers as we established earlier? Do, do you know what? It keeps on changing. There's it, it's it, there's different moments for different reasons. So I'm a I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and so to get to work with George Lucas on Episode One was are you, are you kidding me it was incredible so to just be in the room uh, was great but to be featured as a as a character voice in that was great so i was the voice of a guy called axmo a-k-s-m-o-e if you're playing along at home and, and uh axmo has got like a three three eyes like a goat's head and uh, very dry skin so in episode w- in episode one well, chill boy so in episode one when you hear, uh, they'll go to the Senate scene and you'll see this, the ambassador of Malastair and you'll, see, you'll hear him say, the Congress of Malastair concur with the right honorable delegate for the Trade Federation. A commission must be appointed now. Give me a cake. It might have, the cake big might have been made up. But um, to work with him on that was incredible. And it's opened so many doors, even down to at the end of last year. Hello, Hello. Darth Vader, ladies and gentlemen. Join us, we're talking about Star Wars. Hey, Red. <laughs> Spencer. And, and that was Spencer. Uh, yeah, but to um, uh, yeah, to, to to work on that was great. It's opened so many doors. So at the end of last year, I hosted a Star Wars symphony, and, and it was it was called Symphonic Star Wars, and the bill was the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and me live at the Royal Albert Hall. And are you kidding me? Just to be, I'd have been in the audience. You know, I'd have been at the back of the audience, just enjoying that. But to, to be part of that and being the host of that, we had over ten thousand people come, over two shows. The same day, and, and and to hear to hear that John Williams overture played live, it's it's goosebump inducing. It's exactly how it sounds. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were a few more musicians than that, but it's, the, the, the point. <laughs> Clearly, it's all a cappella. Yeah, but then there's other other things like I, I love being part of Go Jetters, and, and and the response that's had from viewers is incredible. So we've got the Go Jetters magazine now. It's it's all over TV. It's gone all over the world. There's, um, there's, uh, there's uh, Thunderbirds. Again, I'm a massive fan of the original Thunderbirds. Uh, they rebooted that a few years ago. And so I, I've been brought in as a new character called Captain Rigby. Or rather, Captain Rigby. And he is super duper cool. And he has the best hair in television. And, and so Do you want to describe the hair for those who haven't seen it? You have to type in Captain Rigby into, into Google and, and take a look for yourself. It's kind of shaved there and really cool there and... Best man, description in the world. man, if it was any cooler, but Johnny Bravo. Oh, you're doing it again. Oh my word. Right, let's just let's just do that. <laughs> um, but what's your plans for the future then? We we carry on and, and just and we keep creating more stuff. So there's a new game that comes out at the end of August. So we're at the beginning of August now, uh, and um, called Two Point Hospital, which is a really big new title that's um, it's being published by Sega. And um, I worked with the, the people that created this on, on a massive P- PC game. <laughs> it's discreet. Don't, cool. just, just don't think about it. I worked on, the, the, it's the same people that worked it's on a game Ninja called, Reflex called now. Black and White. There was this great PC game called Black and White, which I, I performed character voice on. I was the voice of, the voice of good, the sort of wise wizard conscious. Uh, what? The, 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 the very wise consciousness that you would enjoy throughout the game. I was the voice of good and evil. So the, the total red bag bad guy that asked you to do really naughty things in the game, I was him as well. So it's these two extremes, but the people that, that were behind black and white, um, they've gone on to create this new pro- project, so I'm working with them. And then there's an, a new cartoon that comes out um, probably later on this year that I can't tell you yet. There's a new one called Kit and Pup that's just arrived on CBeebies. So I'm the voice of Kit and Pup. There's a new one called uh, Bits and Bobs on CBeebies. There's a new one called Shane the Chef. There, uh, there's a whole, there's, new, there's a load of stuff. Even down to, if you watch TV and you see uh, a, a national TV or cinema commercial for Michelin. Michelin, save when you, save when worn. 
Actually, I've well. learned to put it even when you need to do the <laughs> cinema voice now. But there's, there's, there's loads of things. There's, there's, there's movie trailers and TV commercials and TV shows and live stuff. and um, There's a stack of them, and, and, I, and I adore it. So here's the hard one. What is your favourite voice to do? The, do you know what? The, it's usually it's usually what the latest thing is I'm working on. So at the moment we're recording new Go Jetters. <gasps> Did I say that out loud? We're, uh, we're we're recording the next season of Go Jetters, and it just keeps on getting better. So at the moment I am loving bringing to life Grandmaster Glitch, playing with those No Jetters in my Grimbler. It's extremely good fun. Yeah. <laughs> I have a personal question, which isn't related to this, but have you ever just walked down the street and started talking in a voice and see how many people, like, realise that you're the actual voice actor? No, but only because I'm not crackers yet. Because <laughs> um, I was watching interviews, ironically, for Suicide Squad, and um, we had, like, Jared Leto just walking in the street laughing, practising out what laugh he was going to do for the Joker, or, like, oh. Margot Robbie was just walking around in a really high-pitched Brooklyn accent, you know, something exactly. like this. Exactly, beautiful. Um, so, you know, she'd be talking like this to people just to see if people would recognise where the accent was from, basically. So I just wanted to know if you've ever gone around just, like, in a voice. Not quite, but that's probably because uh, people would not want you back in the room again. <laughs> hey, how you doing? It's nice, yeah. Can you get me some lace? I want a nice coffee, none of that junk that you just served me out of a bucket. I want a proper one. You know, proper bubbly cappuccino. You know, where you stick your nose in a straw and you, like, blow bubbles in the thing. It's beautiful. It's nice. In fact, I'll change your mind. It sounds hideous. <laughs> I'm not going to do that ever again. That's why we do not do this. <laughs> You're about to dribble there. No, nope, but you've got a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to dribble a lot. My hygiene is not, not impressive. Well, thank you for your time.